The Red Sox definitely fell a bit this weekend, but I don't think it's as bad as it seems. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. Things did not go well for the Red Sox this weekend in Minnesota. They lost two out of three games to the white-hot Minnesota Twins, officially putting their season record at 19-16 and on the year. Still good for third place in the division. Now they're four and a half games back of first place and a game out of a wild-card spot. So we did see a bit of a drop-off in the standings this weekend, but nothing super crazy. And like I said, this series was definitely frustrating, and there were parts of this series that are definitely definitely a bit concerning, but overall, I'm still a bit confident in what this team could be. And I'll tell you why, because in today's video, we're going to be breaking this series down. We're going to talk about the good, talk about the bad, talk about how this series could impact the 2024 season. But before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Just helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Don't forget these episodes are also available on the go in podcast form if you want to listen on your favorite podcasting app. Link will be in the description down below or you can head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Sea Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with the offense in this one because I think there were some positive performances offensively, even though there weren't a ton of runs scored in the first two games. But overall, I think there are still some concerns here. Let's start with the positives. And one of the positives is, say, Don Rafaela, who's quietly on a five-game hitting streak right now. In this series, he had three hits, one in every game, including a really big home run in the last game of the series. Obviously, he's still trying to get his feet fully under him at the plate, but due to this five-game hitting streak, he's officially up above the Mendoza line hitting 202, which is absolutely awesome. A little concerned though, after a foul ball went off of his foot in the last game, hopefully that doesn't turn into anything. The Red Sox really cannot afford to lose, say, Don Rafaela. So we'll wait and see on that. Nothing really after the game about it from Alex Cora. Just something to at least note going forward. Rafael Devers had a good series all around. He had four hits, which resulted in two doubles and a home run that was absolutely crushed. He's up to a 292 average with a 917 OPS on the season, and he's really looking more productive than usual at the plate, which could be really great news for the Red Sox. The glaring part of this series, though, was his strikeout with the bases loaded in the middle game that probably would have pushed the Red Sox to a win had he gotten anything on the board and we'll get to that in a second but in terms of Rafael Devers there was a lot of good and one really bad Von Grissom got his first hit in a Red Sox uniform this weekend he only had one double with two RBIs but it was good to see him coming in and healthy with this team I think it's going to take a little bit for him to get his feet under him a lot like say Don Rafaela hopefully it doesn't take as long but he did have some hard contact in this series and did not strike out once this entire weekend, which is a really positive sign. So there definitely were some positive takeaways from this series offensively. They didn't hit a home run in a week until the last game where, say, Don and Devers went deep, so it's good to see them start incorporating the long ball again. We talked last series how it is important for this team to be able to score runs outside of the home run, right? It's always a good thing to be able to put the ball out of the yard, and it definitely makes winning a whole lot easier, but there are going to be games and stretches where you just can't do that and you need to be able to find other ways to score runs and unfortunately in this series that didn't exactly happen the last game they were able to do that they were five for 11 with runners in scoring position but outside of that in the first two games combined they were just two for 11 that's a 181 batting average with runners in scoring position and they just couldn't get much done offensively we talked about big moments where guys really needed to at the bare minimum have a big hit they didn't need to put the baseball 450 feet to left field they just need to poke one up the middle and we're talking about an entirely different series and just didn't end up happening that's my concern with this offense right now they were not able to score outside of hitting home runs in the last game of the series they were able to push some runs across but three runs over two games just isn't going to win you a whole lot of series, right? That's just not how baseball works anymore. Even with the fantastic pitching that you're still getting on the mound from your starters, you need to be able to score more runs. You just couldn't do that in this series. So I'm a little bit concerned with this offense. However, 
I'm still pretty optimistic about what it could be. And there are a couple reasons for this. We talked about, say, Don Rafaela. I think him starting to get it going at the plate is going to be very important for the Red Sox, especially because the top of the order is still getting on base for you at a pretty decent rate. Dom Smith had some pretty big moments in this series that got the Red Sox some runs, which was fantastic. Von Grissom coming back, I think, over time is going to end up being a really positive for the Red Sox from the bottom of the order. So you're starting to see some things sort of come together in terms of this Red Sox offense. And that's why I'm still positive about it. But yeah, obviously there are some concerns for sure about the overall structure of this offense right now when really you're either feast or famine, right? You're either hitting home runs and winning baseball games or you're coming up short and it's really, really frustrating to watch at the plate. As for the pitching in this series, like I mentioned, the starters continue to be a really solid part of this Red Sox team. Tanner Houck got the ball in game one, and he wasn't the best we've seen in terms of Tanner Houck this season, but it was still six innings, four runs allowed, three of them earned, striking out five and walking two. We know that these guys aren't going to be absolutely perfect every time out, right? Tanner Houck can't physically give you seven innings of no run baseball, and I still think it's impressive that we're like, man, three runs? That's too much for Tanner Houck. It just goes to show how impressive he has been this year. If this was a start from last year, we'd be pumped, right? We'd be absolutely ecstatic that Tanner Houck was able to go six innings and only give up three earned runs. The fact that we're sitting here and being like, Mm, probably should have given us more is a really good sign. Brendan Bernardino was the opener in the second game, and honestly, he looked pretty good despite giving up one unearned run. He might be my favorite reliever on the team. Just goes out there no matter what role he's in and performs. Shout out, Bernie. I love that dude. Overall, it was one inning, one hit, a strikeout, and an unearned run. Hopefully, this is sort of the last we're going to see of an opener for a little bit. Nick Pavetta should be making his way back to the Boston Red Sox any day now. Brian Bayo has a start this week in Portland and Garrett Whitlock is starting to throw from the mound again so we're starting to see hopefully some reinforcements make their way back into this rotation and finally speaking of reinforcements Cooper Criswell is starting to become a dude in my opinion he went he only went four and a third innings which isn't super ideal but those four and a third innings were five hits one earned a walk and five Ks his ERA is sitting at a cool 174 and if they stretch him out to be a guy who can go five six innings regularly like this it might end up being a really difficult decision when this rotation gets healthy or if it ever does whether or not he deserves to be in it he has been really surprising in a great way I'm extremely curious to see how they handle that obviously he's got some time before Brian Bayo gets back before Garrett Whitlock gets back I think he's got a couple of people ahead of him that are going to end up back in the bullpen Josh Winkowski obviously that bullpen game as well but by the time Garrett Whitlock gets back is Cooper Criswell going to establish himself as an everyday starter for the Boston Red Sox I think it might be possible right now overall you look at the starting pitching staff as a whole and they continue to be fantastic right they are giving up a little bit of runs in this series but you're still talking about the top rotation in the entire sport ERA wise and it's really hard again we talk about this all the time to complain really about anything the starters are doing right now for this team one thing we can complain about though and in my opinion the biggest problem with the run prevention unit right now for the Red Sox is the fact that the catchers are giving up unearned runs Reese McGuire had an error that led to an unearned run in this series Connor Wong had two passes balls that led to unearned runs in this series and that's kind of surprising because they were pretty solid last year for the Boston Red Sox but lately we've been seeing these type of plays from both of these catchers it's not just one guy in the behind the dish that's really messing it up both of them have been sort of letting baseballs by them or dropping throws to second base or whatever over the past couple of weeks and we know that the Red Sox biggest problem this year is when they don't play fundamental baseball if they can't figure out how to be a clean baseball team they end up giving a whole lot of runs up and it's hard to win baseball games when you're not playing fundamental baseball and that's exactly what happened with the run prevention unit in this series you can't have superstar pitching if the guys behind the dish just simply can't catch the ball or they can't throw anyone out at second base right that just doesn't work everything needs to mesh well and that did not happen with the catchers in this series so definitely
definitely a bit of a concern there. Absolutely. Connor Wong still hit the ball pretty well, so he's making up for it a little bit, but you just can't have those pass balls and you simply can't make errors behind the dish. It's a little bit easier to get over a guy like, say, Don Rafaela, who hasn't been an everyday shortstop in a little bit, making an error in the last game when you're winning by a lot than it is to have a guy like Connor Wong or Reese McGuire drop a baseball in a critical situation and end up behind the eight ball right away. That's just, it's not a recipe for success and that needs to be figured out very quickly because right now it's both of these guys it's not just one or the other the bullpen in this series was I would say fine they bent a little bit they didn't fully break one guy who did struggle a bit in this series was Uasawa now that he's got some major league experience he didn't get a ton of time in AAA I'm really curious to see what Andrew Bailey can do with Uasawa and how he could figure out the best plan of attack here I think a lot of it has to do with utilizing that splitter a whole lot more but we'll see I got faith in Andrew Bailey to be able to find some way to make Uasawa a pretty reliable reliever he's he's done it before I think he could do it again and outside of him, there were four earned runs, including Uesawa's earned run in this series. So a little bit more than we're used to with the bullpen. But overall, honestly, I don't think they're the biggest reason why the Red Sox lost this one. I think ultimately it comes down to letting up those unearned runs and not being able to put enough runs across the plate. Overall, you look at this series as a whole, and I, like I said, it's a stumble, right? They ran into the hottest team in Major League Baseball and couldn't keep up for the first couple of games. Luckily, they were able to pull themselves up by the bootstraps in the last game and really put a good one together, which personally is a good sign in my opinion, right? They were able to come back from two games where they essentially got bodied in basically every single way and were able to pick themselves up and win this game and avoid the series sweep, which I do think is really important. But I think, again, it all comes back to fundamentals. You're not going to be able to compete against good teams that are doing well, like the Minnesota Twins, if you aren't being able to put runs across the plate without a home run or you're not catching baseballs behind the plate, right? Usually, catching baseballs and scoring runs is a rest recipe for success. Right now, they need to start competing against these good teams. That's exactly their biggest problem. You're not going to be able to get anywhere right now if you don't compete against teams with winning records or teams that are doing well. It's just not going to happen. Right now, they're barely holding on. And again, seeing what they did at the end of this series was a really encouraging sign. And I think what it's going to end up taking is guys need to just get their feet wet a bit more. Dom Smith, Garrett Cooper, brand new to the ball club. They're still trying to figure out Boston and the Red Sox. Von Grissom. He just came back from his injury this series. You're still getting guys who, I don't know, probably aren't super comfortable with their new team just yet. And I'm hoping that over time and over the next couple of series, you're going to see these guys really settle in and figure out what kind of role they have within the 26 man roster, which I think is going to be super important to whether or not this team succeeds. Overall, again, was it the best series in the world to watch? Absolutely not. There were plenty of things that we're sitting here complaining about on a Monday morning, but again, and you didn't really drop anything standing wise. You're still in third place since division. You're a half a game more out of a wild card spot than you were going into it. You avoided the series sweep, which I think is important, right? You're not going to win every series of the year, but avoiding getting swept and losing three or four games in a row at that point allows you to stop the bleeding as soon as humanly possible. And I do think that's a good sign. Again, you look at the team as a whole and you still sit there and you say, okay, yeah, I still feel optimistic about this team. I'm still a long way with the ride here. This was just a bad stretch of baseball. Hopefully they're able to turn around. It's a tough stretch coming up here. We're really going to have to see what this team is made of over the next few series, but that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What did you think of this series? What did you think of the good? What did you think of the bad? Was there anything in here that's really concerning to you? Were you still sitting there like me where you're like, ah, you know, it was a bad series, but I'm still optimistic about what this team could be. Let me know all your thoughts on the latest Red Sox series in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like I said in the intro, we talk socks almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Just helps it out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Don't forget, always available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Link is in the description down below. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.